MMB World is here in Hollywood in Mongolia, and I'm joined by Mr. Lloyd Kaufman and Patricia Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman is the, one of the, has the oldest uh, independent film production called Trauma Entertainment, and, and Ms. Patricia uh, it was the former uh, film commissioner of the New York State, right? That's right. Yes. So welcome to Mongolia. Bayerla. Bayerla. So my first question, what brought you to here in Mongolia? Uh, well, because it's very exciting to see a country emerge, take its really serious steps towards... And we're America. from New York, that's what's uh, very interesting. And we're not even from Hollywood. So how great that, <clears throat> how great that digital content uh, invite us from New York, even though it's Hollywood in Mongolia. That tells you how important the commissioner and trauma is in the movie industry. Yes. So, yes, you, you were the New York um, Film Commissioner for a very long time, <coughs> and you were very instrumental in passing laws to have films that were made in New York to be like basically independent and also uh, have some kind of control over their uh, production in, in line. In line. Yeah, the, the purpose of our incentive, which, is, uh, which, I, was in, which I wrote, uh, was to build the industry into New York, to bring as much production to New York um, as possible. We too wanted to bring the Hollywood productions to New York, but we also wanted to build our own indigenous industry uh, in New York. So we wanted to support our independent filmmakers as well as bringing in the big Hollywood films. So we were very careful to write our incentive and our regulations to uh, benefit both the big Hollywood films as well as the indigenous film coming out of New York. Coming back to like independent filmmakers, like how important is like for like maybe like local filmmakers to have independence, and why is it important for like maybe like local filmmakers to have their independence, and maybe say like n say something, say like no, we're not going to do this Hollywood thing. Why is it important for maybe Mongolians to have their own independent voice, maybe? It's an art. Making movies is an art. And uh, there are easier ways to make money, right? Yes. You have copper, right? Yes. You have a coal, beautiful coal, like Donald Trump says, <laughs> uh, right? You've got all this riches. You can make, you, movies is an art form, you know, you don't, it's the hardest way to make money. There's, we have made some money. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got lucky with the Toxic Avenger. And when we made the Toxic Avenger, it, no theater would take it, nobody. And then, because of word of mouth, and no matter how rich Rupert Murdoch or Mr. Sony is, they cannot buy word of mouth. And only the independents can really be the, the innovators. Mm -hmm. I worked on Rocky when I was very young, one of my first jobs. Sylvester Stallone believed in what he was doing. He, he loved uh, the cinema. He loved his, his script. He was, his soul was in it. And uh, the, the, the big companies, they're uh, not trying, they're making baby food. That's it. And still, Sylvester Stallone uh, stuck to what he was doing. The Toxic Avenger got made and became the 35 years later, a movie that cost less than one half of 1% of a typical Hollywood movie has uh, still here. Cartoon Show was made from this movie. Four movies was made from Toxic Avenger. Toys. Uh, Broadway to, a Broadway musical uh, that played in London's West End, all from a movie that cost less than that uh, le less than five hundred thousand U.S. dollars. And thirty-five years later, people are still watching it. You can see it for free, by the way, on uh, on YouTube. Trauma movies on YouTube. All thanks to the great commissioner from the great state of New York. And can I add something? Yes. Uh, uh, another reason why it's important that you build your indigenous, your local filmmakers, and support them is because they will tell your local stories. They will. They will. <laughs> Toxie loves my wife. They will tell your stories, uh, the Mongolian stories, um, and the ones from history, but also the, the contemporary stories about day-to-day -day life in Mongolia. So it's, it's your local filmmakers that are going to tell those stories, and, uh, and those stories are important. And out of those stories emerge, you know, you never know, out of those stories may be another Rocky, who thought that this movie that Sylvester Stallone had written was going to end up being one of the most important films and a real in cultural history, touchstone, yeah. certainly in the U.S. Uh, who would have known that this little film that my husband worked on uh, would turn into such an important statement? Yes. 
and I'm sure there are filmmakers and young filmmakers here, right now, young and old filmmakers in Mongolia right now, who are writing their own scripts, yes. thinking about their own stories, and among them would be the will be your Rocky, yes. uh, among others. But the young people here, and you agree with me, we are incredibly impressed with the young people here. They speak beautiful English. It's incredible. And they have read books from all over the world. They know the cultures of countries all over the world. They have a great foundation to make wonderful movies. I think uh, the American uh, schools are, are not are failing in that regard. They are not opening the minds enough. Uh, uh, your, your young people here are incredible. It's really, I think the biggest takeaway for us is meeting the amazing generation of people who will be great to filmmakers if they so choose. And if you, if, and, and assuming that your, your, your policy makers really make the effort to support them. Like the young filmmakers. Yeah. Speaking on that note, like um, so Hollywood and Mongolia will probably like attract a lot of maybe like uh, filmmakers from, from America and maybe like Sony or Disney and uh, seeing that maybe some Mongolians will be like, will be awestruck and say like, oh, let's do this. Here's like, yes. what you do. I'll tell you exactly what you do. There's a country called Albania. Yes. You ever hear of it? Yes. Nobody made movies in Albania. Nobody wanted to go there. Troma, because we are poor, we don't have a lot of money. We said, okay, we'll go to Albania. And they gave us a Navy boat. They gave us a wonderful crew. They gave us all sorts of wonderful things. Now all the, these movies are going to Albania. But there, in the movie business, there is very little courage. There's, there's very, everybody is afraid to do anything. They're afraid to lose their jobs. They're afraid, they're, they're, they're chicken, they're cowards. So the independents very often are the first ones. So find a script that Troma can make here that is, can be done on low budget. They, they can send it to you. We will, we'll bring half the money, let's say half a million dollars. Uh, my wife will sell her jewelry and uh, we, our grandchildren can uh, be, uh, uh, you know, we can, they can work and uh, we'll make a movie with you come up with half the money and a great script and uh, Uncle Lloyd will come and direct a movie and uh, we'll uh, make an American, a Mongolian co-production. We would love that. Well, we want we crazy, crazy scripts though, crazy uh, script. one of a kind. The kind of movie that can turn into another Toxic Avenger or Class of Newcomb High or Return to Return to Newcomb High, AKA Volume 2 or Terra Firmer or Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD or Cannibal the Musical, which was the first movie by the South Park guys, Troma movie. Many famous people started with Troma, all thanks to the great commissioner from the great state of New York. Well, my last question to, for both of you is that uh, what kind of advice would you give to like Mongolian film, like uh, aspiring filmmakers who want to go into film but are too scared or maybe saying like, oh, I don't have the budget or I don't have actors or I don't have th this kind of equipment. What kind of advice would you give to them? Well, what do you suggest? I think you should go first because you well, have the... the, the, the <laughs> also, I'm a narcissist. Uh, the, the thing to do is you don't need money anymore. The digital revolution has democratized the making of cinema. So you can, uh, if you can scrape a little money together or make a Kickstarter uh, campaign, or uh, you don't really need money anymore. You can make a great movie for $2,000 or $5,000. I can't because I'm old and senile, but, but we have young people who are making movies for $25,000 or less, and they're very, very good. The problem is that you cannot expect to pay your rent or eat uh, because it's very hard to find a public due to the fact that the industry is very consolidated. It, in every country, there's only one or two distributors left, uh, or, or the local government. And, um, and in the United States, same thing. There's four or five giant companies. So it's very hard to make a living. But you can still make movies. You can be a teacher or a nurse or, or a, uh, uh, a, um, a farmer, whatever. Uh, and have a real life and make movies at the same time and do your own distribution through the internet. Uh, so there is a way to be an artist. Uh, you know, when you make a painting, you only need $100. Canvas and paint, you can do anything you want. It's almost the same with cinema. You can make the art. The problem is uh, the art may not help you to eat. So that is the conundrum. And I believe that, that if, you, if you really have the passion in you and you have a project that you love, a script that you've written or a script that you've found, 
and it really speaks to you and is really important to you, then you then have the courage. Just go for it. Um, make your own damn movie. My husband wrote a whole book about yes. make your own damn and movie. There's also a movie about that, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so I truly believe it too. It's that so uh, to the young filmmakers that are perhaps hesitant yeah, or whatever, actually, make just do it. You know, make those, your own damn movie. I've I've written seven books uh, all about filmmaking. Uh, I'm happy to give away the rights for free if. If there's a Mongolian publisher who wants to translate the books, and I don't, I'm, you can have it for free. Part of what Troma wants to do is encourage and support independent art and independent commerce to keep democracy and free speech and free art alive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.